Okay, this week we're talking about flowers. So flowers are the reproductive organs of angiosperms. Angiosperms are flowering plants. Very diverse in color, size, and form. They have one objective, and that's sexual reproduction. And of all the plants that we know that have been identified on Earth, 88% of them are angiosperms. So here's our chart of monocot and dicot once again. And you can see with monocots, floral parts are going to be in multiples of three. And on dicots, you're going to have floral parts that are multiples of four or five. So a complete flower has four whorls. The whorls are calyx, corolla, androsium, and gynosium. And the calyx is the collective term of sepals. In this particular picture, you can see sepals are below the flower. The corolla is the collective portion of the petals. The androsium contain the stamen, which all consist of anther and filament. Gynosium is uh, the pistil or carpal, either one is acceptable, and that consists of stigma, style, ovary, and ovule. Okay, here's a complete flower that's a dicot, and you can see it's got everything. It's got the petal, it's got the sepal, it's got the stamen, and it's got the carpal or pistil. Sometimes you can't differentiate between the petals and the sepals, so then they're called tepals. This is a true lily here. Okay, the pistil or carpal consists of the stigma, the style, and the ovary. And the stigma receives the pollen. That's where the pollen germinates. The style is the slender part of the pistil. It's located between the stigma and the ovary, and this is where the pollen tube grows. And the ovary is the reproductive structure. It contains the ovules, and the ovary is the fruit that encloses the seeds which the ovules become. Okay, the pollen tube runs down the stigma, or down the style, excuse me. So it attaches to the stigma, the pollen. It begins to germinate and produces this pollen tube, and then it brings the sperm to the female portion of the flower. And the ovule is the enclosed structure and that's where it's delivered and after fertilization the ovule becomes a seed. The stamen consists of the anther, that's the pollen bearing portion of the flower. You can see there's a close-up of the stamen here. The filament is the slender stalk and pollination occurs when there's a transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma or from uh, a staminate cone to an ovulate cone in conifers. So what if you don't see all these parts? So you remember the complete is going to have the sepals, the petals, the stamens, and the pistils. Incomplete is going to have one or more of these missing. A perfect flower has both stamens and pistils. Imperfect is missing one of these. They're either a staminate flower or a pistillate flower or carpellate flower, you'll see it as. And this is where we have monoecious and dioecious plants, and we'll talk about those in a moment. Okay, here's an incomplete flower. You've got everything but the petals. Imperfect flowers, the top one is staminate only, so it only has stamens, and pistillate or carpellate only have pistils or carpels. Okay, monoecious plants, these have imperfect, they're imperfect flowers with staminate, the male flowers, and carpellate female flowers on the same plant. And here are, uh, this is squash, I believe. Um, so you need to have, there, there are male and female flowers on the same plant. Dioecious is when you have the staminate flowers on one plant and the carpellate or pistillate flowers on another plant. So hollies are dioecious. You have separate plants for these, uh, the female and the male, and if you were confused on which one you had, you, once it flowered, you could try to see if it has only pistils, and on the left here, you can see that center portion of that flower is the pistil, and then on the right, we've got the male flower, so all it's got is the stamen, there would be no pistil.
Okay, the other way plant flowers are described are how they are, uh, whether or not they're symmetric. Actinomorphic means radially symmetrical. That means if you were going to slice it in any direction, it would look exactly the same. It's also called actin actinomorphic. Zygomorphic equals bilaterally symmetrical. So if you were going to slice that in half, there'd be only one direction you could slice it where it would look exactly the same on one side than the other. So here we have uh, the Lamiaceae. These are bilaterally symmetric. You could not slice it in every direction and get um, the same identif identical reflection. Okay, the other way that flowers are described are hypogonous, perigonous, or epigonous. And what that means is hypogonous means the ovary is superior. It's above the petals, it's above the stamen, it's above the sepals. Perignus is half inferior, so some of the ovary is going to be below other portions of the flower. So you can see here we've got the petals and the stamen are above the ovary and the sepals are below or around it. Um, and then inferior is when everything around the flower is above it. Okay, here is a superior ovary, if this helps. Pedicel is just the stem of the flower. Okay, here's some more descriptions here. So the above attachment of the superior ovary has is above the attachment of the petals, sepals, and stamens. It's also an ovary that's free of the hypanthium, which is just a an area. It's the area below the flowers. So again, here's our hypogonous. Petal sepals and stamens are attached to the base of the ovary and perigonous petal sepals and stamens are on the rim of the hypanthium. Okay, we need to talk about Asteraceae because what people don't understand are what people think are petals those are actually flowers. So in the center of a sunflower that we have here, those are disc flowers. Every portion becomes a seed, right? Those are disc flowers. The ray flowers are around the perimeter. And not all ray flowers are fertile. A lot of them are uh, actually sterile. So here's a cross section here of disc flowers and ray flowers. The ray flowers are around the rim and you can see it's got the uh, sexual portions of the flower at the base of what you think is a petal and then along the center here you've got the disc flowers. So you've got the stigma, you've got fused anthers that are attached around the base of the stigma. Here's the corolla and then the pappus which when you're identifying Asteraceae, uh, pappus is used to describe uh, many portions of the sepals. Um, there's very various de descriptions of these. So here we have the head, and you know, the Compositae used to be the family name for daisy family, and uh, that's because it's a composite flower. And so it's got the disc florets surrounded by the ray florets. So there's the corolla of the ray flower. There's the ovary of the ray flower. There's the corolla of the disc flower, the ovary of the disc flower. And then below that you have a bract or a filary. Okay, dandelions are only made of ray flowers. So here is a ribbon-like corolla or a ligule. Um, you can see it's got a stigma that catches the pollens and then the joined anthers produce the pollen 
and there's a developing pappus and a sheen and a sheen is a type of fruit so this is why they're very successful they have tufts of hair which are the pappus that collect the, the wind picks them up they have a needle-like beak which supports it so they stand up and then an asheen with spines that help us stick to the soil. So this is why dandelion is so successful. We're never going to really truly get rid of dandelions in this world, I believe. That's my belief. Okay, and here, as I said, not all um, composites have disc flowers. Thistles only have disc flowers. Okay, so the other thing you hear described of flowers are the inflorescence. That's a collection of flower. And here's uh, the pedicel. If you remember, I mentioned pedicel is a flower stalk. The pedunkel is the supporting stalk of an inflorescence. A bract is a cluster of bracts are called an involucre. And you can see the flower on the top there. So in this picture, you can see the peduncle collects is below the uh, collection of flowers. The pedicel is the stem to the flower. So there's your pedicel, there's your bract, there's your peduncle. So here's some different types of inflorescences. Indeterminate uh, inflorescence type tend to have the first flowers open at the base and some of these could be a head or a panicle, a spike, or an umbel. Determinate inflorescence types are going to have the first flowers open at the top or the middle. And these are cyme, dicasium, monocasium, and scurpoid. And then you have corum, cyme, and umbel. So a corum, the youngest flower is going to be in the center. So that's going to be the last to open. A cyme is going to have the oldest flower in the center. And in an umbel, all the pedicels arise from the same common plant. And the type of plants that are usually in this group are in the carrot family.